All right, welcome back to the big board. So uh, I was gonna do this live and then I thought, you know what? Let's minimize the errors and I can always come back and redo this if I food bar it up. But rather than uh, have a look at one game, I've received several things in the mail over the last few days and also thought it'd be a good time to catch up on a little mini con I went to up in St. Louis, part of the Advanced After Combat uh, group of guys that uh, get together twice a year. And I'm fortunate enough to get uh, invited occasionally, or actually every time. That's just whether or not I can actually make it. Uh, it's more occasional than uh, regular. So that was a great event. Let's talk about that real sort of sort of quickly. And we'll talk about mainly about the game that I played. But uh, we had uh, 19 or 20 people, and there was a pretty significant set of complicated games. Right. So we had. Uh, great campaigns of the American Civil War, Empire in Arms, OCS, Carthage from GMT, excuse me, and then playtest version of Vietnam uh, that uh, I've just been eating blueberries. So that's the first real food I've had in four days. <coughs> it's fabulous. Uh, and then uh, Vietnam from GMT, the reprint of, uh, of the original Victory Games title. So that uh, was an excellent experience. I played, did, we did a three player of Carthage. Uh, two folks running the consular armies and then one person playing Carthage. N playing with the newest rules, so we actually had the charts from Thunderbolt, uh, which is about to start playtesting pretty soon. So with the chap that I was playing with, Jason, he had access to uh, the charts. And I think they're on CSW. It's no big deal, no big secret or anything. But uh, So we were just playing with those. Rules need some work. The rules uh, continue to be refined and are better. Uh, this game, this gameplay now, I believe the way the rules are structured will will drive you to a longer game. It will be much more difficult for you to get an auto victory as Rome, and certainly a little more challenging as uh, as Carthage. Potentially, uh, my opponent was not as aggressive as they could have been playing Carthage, and I think they could have won early, potentially. There's some changes, uh, and I guess there's there's schools of thought on, on what's balanced and what's not about Carthage, and to net it out, I got the impression, based on the original rules that we played with and some of the, the, the not-so-recent revisions, that Rome was kind of on the back foot, and it was easy for Carthage if they were aggressive and smart and lucky, that they could get a uh, auto victory in 2060 or 2059 or 2058 or before 2050 uh, for sure. So pretty early in the game, the game runs to 2048, I think it is. Sorry, 2048 to two, uh, 248. So uh, with that in mind, I, we as we're playing these new rules, uh, kind of halfway through the game, we realized that the rules had changed significantly for recruiting and it got pretty, pretty difficult for Rome. So we, we were on a really good path and doing well, and then realized we were playing it incorrectly. And so we changed, and that really kind of put uh, uh, a log in the spoke, so to speak, of the wagon wheel. So that uh, shit fell off the, off the rails really quickly there. And the game really, and we never really recovered from that. Uh, also made some other mistakes with reading victory conditions in terms of what had to be held, what what needed to be garrisoned, what didn't need to be garrisoned, you know, the old uh, issues with control and what does it really mean, and certain provinces have different control uh, rules, and so uh, there's that, right? That's an issue. Sometimes it's all the medium cities, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's three uh, two-thirds, Sometimes it's two thirds of the small towns and all the big towns, so you really had to do your homework and while I think we had uh, done our prep, we were not conversant with all the rules. Now, so it, so th and things had changed as well. So we, we we were moving from one basically from one system to another a little bit for me anyway. Uh, so the manpower rules for uh, Rome changed. The manpower rules rules for Carthage changed significantly. Much much easier for them to raise armies and large armies, and they could just run around and pound people, and they can send all of their armies off overseas, uh, depending on the alert level they have. But that seemed to be easier to achieve. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, 
all in all, fantastic experience. It's a bucket list thing to do to play that game, either uh, uh, you know, opposed or solo. Uh, I, I still think though the game needs a bit of smoothing and polishing from from the scenario book standpoint. Uh, we came back with a handful of questions that we're going to ask Alan Murray, the developer. But it does leave me incredibly excited for the GMT Thunderbolt, Second Punic War, with a with much bigger footprint, including parts of Spain, I believe, and uh, the Gallic tribes and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. Anyway, so that was that. And uh, other folks were playing other things, and they had a great time. And we may or may not have uh, over-imbibed on uh, soda pops and stuff like that. So that was all good times. And let's have a look at some stuff that I got in. So the first thing I want to, I want to, let's switch the camera. Camera, there we go. Uh, first thing I want to look at is uh, this uh, Atlanta campaign, the death of Dix Dixie. And the short version of this is that uh, pretty nice production quality. So we've got. Uh, hopefully these counters won't fall out. Oh, I think they're in a baggie. There we go. So. Nice counter art, straightforward game, lock and, locking zones of control, uh, movement's pretty straightforward. You've got your standard combat results table. There are, there are some Chrome based rules that you can uh, apply uh, with command and some combat stuff there. So this is all nice big font here. Uh, this is a Don Lowry game. Uh, you can see this big, big font. It's a classic lock and load style of uh, content, right? And here's uh, just a printout of the game inside the magazine. And there are some cards in here that you need to use for some of the advanced rules that you probably need to cut out, I guess. Uh, anyway, 10 or 12 pages of rules. Look pretty cool. Now, the only shortcoming I see or thing that I, I was a little bit disappointed with, and I'm not going to pull them out of the bag. These are folded over maps, which is fine. There's three of them, which is fine. But it could have been one map. And I, and I think that's just a print run uh, limitation for lock and load at the moment when they do stuff in-house. They can only print a certain size, like it can only be this size, right? This width, I guess, but it can be that long. So there's three maps this big. And uh, that uh, that just, you're gonna have to put it under Plex or tape it down or something like that. So I thought that was a little different. Um, also got in Battles uh, to the Rhine, Lock and Load Tactical System. I'm going to come back to this one in a second. I want to cover off on all of these. So, uh, you know, and I, I did not buy these. Okay, so Dave sent me all these, and um, I'm, I'm very generous. Uh, in fact, so let's just pull one of these uh, out, and I'll try and explain how you would use these and what you would use them for. Because there are a lot of people who have uh, gone and got the digital versions of the games, for lock and load tactical and they don't have all the scenarios but they have a pdf of the rule book right so that's that's kind of cool they've got let me angle this down so you can see stuff better uh so they've got a pdf of the rule book they can play the game they can work it out but they may not have all the charts and things like that so this has if you've purchased the digital copy or you just need a copy of the scenarios you can buy this little companion uh, booklet <clears throat> and it includes all scenarios for the module, right? And then the charts that you saw in the back there. Let me see here. Uh, it also has the point unit point costs. So if you want to, um, if you want to make your own scenarios, you've got to do that. And that's one of the things that's going to be cool coming in the scenario generator for the online version of Lock and Load Tactical is you'll be, able to, you'll be able to build your scenarios and run Germans versus VC if you want. You know, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. And I have heard a rumor that there might be some some uh, some um, fun October style uh, uh, forces made available at some point as well. So anyway, you've got all these reference tables in here, and I just think this is a really smart idea. If you've bought the digital version of the game and you want the scenarios, want to read about it, look at it, uh, and you want the tables to kind of look at and reference and, and the uh, hero cards and things like that, pretty neat. And uh, they're out for all the, all the different modules. So these are very, very cool. So very appreciative of all them coming. Big hefty bunch of stuff. 
Uh, and they're not expensive either. I think, I, I don't want to say what the price is because I don't really know, I, I didn't, haven't looked, uh, but I want to say they're, 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 well, they're definitely under 30 bucks. Okay, so an expansion, this kind of came out of nowhere for me. I, I was unaware of it and then all of a sudden it's out in the marketplace and people are going crazy about it. I had a look at it online. I had a look on, at it on the digital side of things first because it actually came out digitally first, I think. It's a handful of uh, new scenarios. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, nine new scenarios. And once again, you can build your characters, you build your characters, build your scenarios. Uh, you've got your reference tables here because it's, uh, it's kind of like a companion, but it's got expansion scenarios, but it's got expansion maps as well. So there's new maps. Uh, get these out without damaging them around the camera. I don't even know what this is, so that's just a back sheet. So yeah, look at this. Uh, let's have a look at this map. And these are what? Oh, there's some special rules in the module uh, for stuff. We're not gonna worry about going over all that right now. We've got uh, a river crossing bridge and then a winter a winter map another winter map oops there goes the, the point and then you've got these all again in that they're all x map sized right then you've got the regular size ones as well so if you've never seen the x size ones there you go and here are the extra incremental counters so you're going to get some additional british chaps and uh, uh, American troopers. Colonel Heath is going to be in there. Oh, he's got a leadership rating of eight. That's not fair. Anyway, you've got some other guys in here. So I think that's all pretty neat. Uh, uh, and I'm excited about getting one of those onto the table pretty quickly. This will be one of the things I, I hit pretty soon. So we're just gonna, we can just leave that there for the moment. I don't think that'll get in the way. Now, the other cool thing I got in, obviously, you probably saw that before, was the Korean War. Uh, and I also happen to have, uh, I thought it'd be interesting because I'm, I'm not going to, I'll do a shrink rip, sort of. <laughs> uh, here, there's your shrink rip, okay? We. Uh, but I thought it might be interesting to compare and contrast the maps and counters uh, between the two modules and just have a look at it from that perspective versus get, getting into a, a long conversation about the game mechanics and all the rest of it. If you haven't played, you need to, you probably should play this version, I'm gonna guess. I think it's roughly the same game, at least I hope it is. And uh, this, this I've only played this one time and only played two or three, maybe four uh, turns, literally, so I don't have a lot of deep experience with it, which is why we're not gonna talk about the ins and outs of this. So design a signature edition from Compass Games. Nice, heavy, strong uh, box. I like that. Oh, and there's some errata. What do you know? Thanks for playing. Uh, a couple of D10s. And so then you've got your playbook. Your rules of play. We'll get into it and have a look in a sec. There's all of these uh, charts and tables here. One for each by the looks of it. Oh no, that's a, a depot table and a combat results table. Oh, there's lots of charts in here. Look at all this action. Damn. This is pretty cool. Okay, so then, okay, we'll have to have a look at these in a second. Uh, there are a lot of charts in here. So let's, maps, one, two, three maps. Four maps. I was unaware that there were four maps. I thought it was a three mapper. Interesting way to keep all the counter sheets together. Like, I think I might like that. Let's uh, let's have a look at this action. All right, now. So let's start comparing with the rules uh, with the with the counters. I'm not going to pull this all apart, or maybe I am because I can't help myself. Yes, I am. Trying to get this off without doing too much damage to the actual game because I don't want the units to fall out. I'm thinking they might be pretty easy punched, so let's do this. Okay. It's 
So it's two and a half sheets of counters. You've got your US and UN Air Forces. I don't even know what the colors mean, right? And then you've got your international forces there, all with the flags. Uh, it looks like my, my print out is offset, unfortunately. So uh, that's a shame here that I may need to touch base with somebody because that is uh, that's offset pretty badly. Now, just this half, mind you. So now let's check the other counters more carefully. Yeah, that sucks. That's uh, counter sheet three by the looks of it. All right, these ones all look like they're fine. These look great. The primary plane counters, it's just gonna be these information counters that might need to get replaced. And these ones all look pretty good. Yep. North Korean guys, China, Soviets, so the optional Soviets uh, rule rules will be in here then. And then, uh, oh, I'm just ashamed about those. Okay, well, let's just put that to one side. So let's look at the counters on the, in this game now. And here's the counters. <laughs> Pretty stark difference right now. You notice how, how they kind of honored the color scheme as well here. Let's, uh, oh, well, maybe they didn't, not for the, not for the, not for the Chinese, okay. Uh, for the Korean, the, the North Koreans and the South Koreans, they're a little different. There's the Chinese, communist Chinese. The North Koreans are bright yellow. And then you've got, I, th I know, I thought that, now these are much, much greener than what you're seeing on the camera. I don't know why that is, but there you go. That is what it is. Here's the rock. Okay, so let's see what the rock forces colors are here. Um, hang on one second, guys. And these are a decent thickness too. They're pretty nice. Much, much better quality than, than these, even though these are much, much older, of course. Oh, nicer font. Um, okay, let's see. What was I looking for? That's right. I was going to look at the United States, United States. Here's the rock down here, I guess. And of course, it's a Joe Belkowski game, right? So it's automatically epic. So there's the rock colors. And we can see the, the other rock. There's the rock colors there. So they are quite substantially different. All right, so we can see that, right? That was in, that, I thought that was interesting just to have a little look at. And now, Put the maps out side by side and here's a i don't know if this chart's in there but that i remember this un play play aid card i'm going to pop this up and we'll just get one map out from each so we'll just grab this little section here pyongyang a northern korean section no actually this is south and central and then we'll see if we can find the same map here Wow, this is pretty interesting. I can tell you already which one I prefer. If I can just find the same section. Just bear with me here, guys. It's probably gonna, it's either gonna be A or B. Okay. This map B. And you can certainly, of course, see, first of all, counter sizes are substantially different. Counter sizes, hex sizes are substantially different. A lot of information on the chart, on the, uh, on the maps. And here's the southern, here's the southern section. Let's fold this over. Beautiful, subtle, clean, nice hex outlines. Um, a lot of information around the map, which is the same for this guy as well. Which kind of surprises me. I was thinking that, that maybe there were extra charts because, uh, or maybe it's duplicated, I don't know. But there seems to be a lot of charts in this particular release as well. Let's have a quick look at the rules and then we'll have a look, we'll get back to these charts and have a look at them. 
And here's, here you can see the old rule book that was all just all in one. Rules of play, all in uh, black and white with uh, tables and bits and pieces in the middle. Scenarios in the classic VG format. And here we have, let's see, what are we clocking in at? We're clocking in at uh, 38 pages, including a whole bunch of other bits and pieces, right? Uh, full color, nicely laid out, nice and clean. Shows you it's, four, it's a four mapper. So two, two horizontal, two vertical. I'm not gonna go through all this. I'm gonna assume that this is the majority of the same, but full color examples when full examples of combat. And then a separate and complete playbook. With all the details, much easier to read, hopefully more accessible. Oh, and look at a full, uh, full example of play, of course, what would be uh, a war game today without a full 20 page or 10 page uh, example of play. There you go. Five scenarios. All right, so let's do this. Let's put all that to one aside. I want to have a look at, quick look at these charts because this is pretty cool. So a reinforcement chart, okay, on both sides, a terrain chart. There's also a terrain chart on the map. Or maybe that's, uh, yes, there is. There's one on the map as well. Uh, so I think these are replications of what's on the map also. Whoops, excuse me. Pretty detailed. UN depots. Well, this is a folding opening one. Another terrain chart. Huh. Combat results table. So this is all in one. Hmm. Okay. Another UN depot table. Or did I already see that? Oh, that's a reinforcement table I had before. Yep. Game record. Close air support track. Something on the back of that guy. There's a CRT. It's the same as that guy. North Korean Depot, their ops track, which is also on the map. Another, this is the CRT, looks like it's for uh, the bad guys. And this is, if you want it all in one, I think what we've got here, oh, this is nice here with a little summary of the counters. So you can use this or this, or you can use this. I'm not sure why there are two lots of uh, charts in there, but that is nice that there's extra ones in case you're playing multiplayer, if you choose to do that. So I thought that was pretty, pretty sweet looking uh, and well produced so far, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll have to, uh, I'll have to check in with Compass about the, the print run on the counters, whether it was just me or it was, uh, a broader problem but uh, here you can see the rest of the maps there's four large maps I'm not gonna open them all up you, you get the drill and you can also see that uh, all the all the tables here are also on the on the map as well which you know I don't know how I feel about that given that you have so much so many charts already wouldn't it be kind of cool just to have uh, had the map uh, just by itself then again, maybe they're trying to keep it uh, true to the original, and uh, and and keep it all uh, keep it all authentic. All right, that was a bit of a long video, but I thought you might like to see uh, the Korean War from Compass Games, some goodies from uh, Lock and Load, and uh, you know I was going to show you uh, the Battle of Kursk that I have set up. But we're here at 24 minutes, and I think that's probably more than enough. All right, folks, all the best. Ciao.